it is time for chapter seven. We're over the halfway point now. Nera shielded her eyes from the wind and caught up with Regis. You said you have a refuge in Dillinger. This is where you go. Yes. For what? To hide. A witcher is following us. A monster hunter. Two days had passed since they had left Fenkan and returned to the Yoruga. The sky was finally clearing up and the snow-covered plains sparkled in the setting sun. A witcher. In my eyes, from beings like you, even five of them should pose no challenge. Detlaf unbuckled his coat, exposing his hip. Look! Neris hissed as she assessed the hideous cleft in his side. He attacked me in Warford three weeks ago. Normally, it would heal overnight. Vampire hunting seems to be his speciality, Regis said. We have to be extremely careful. It would be careful, then, to stay at Fenkarn, use its reputation as shelter. Superstition and a pile of stones aren't enough. But there are places that have been created to give us a safe haven. Neris cracked her fingers. I want to ask you for help, somewhere near Dillingen. She broke off at the sound of voices. Regis pointed to the camp set along with wilted trees, a couple of tents with holes and smoke billowing out from fire within. We'll return to this conversation. They ousted us from our homes at the end of the war and they are still sitting there. Soldiers, damn them to hell. Stone-faced, they stared at the camp of exiles behind the woman as she told her story. They festooned our village with their banners. They treat it like a military post. I told them, this here is my home, and there on that water, that's the boat in which my father and grandfather used to sail the Yoruga, but, but they didn't care. So I took the kid in my arms and I begged for mercy. It's winter, I said. It's cold. We're hungry. I pleaded for them to spare one hut, to behave like human beings. They didn't budge, said Detlaf. A child peeked out from behind the woman, hopeful eyes on a hungry face. She brushed his hair back from his forehead, then adjusted his hood. They call the Nilfgaardians intruders, she said, bloody invaders. But now the fight with the blacks is over. The country is supposed to be liberated, yet we cannot return to our own huts. Seems to me we're the ones who lost. Regis gritted his teeth. Wait until tomorrow. Return to your homes at dawn. But the military, we tried. Yes, now let me try. It was dusk when they reached the settlement. There were five huts with snow-crushed roofs, a lone pier, the swinging mast of fishing boats. Laughter and joyful shouts came from the largest hut. Regis took the bag off his shoulder and handed it to Detlaf. Wait here, he said. The door creaked as he pushed it open and stepped inside, into stagnant air thick with pipe smoke. The soldiers gathered at the table fell silent. Who are you? asked a bearded man with a scar on his temple. My name is Emil Regis, or Emil Regis. I am travelling to Dillinger. The soldier leaned forward, wrestling his bristly chin on a plump fist. Are you going alone, brave of you? Or oh, stupid, another soldier chimed in. Or oh, stupid indeed, said the bearded man. You are lost, Emil Regis, but luckily for you there is a road that leads beyond the hills. There you just need to go straight on. I know that. Then why come here? I met some people who you expelled from their homes, children even, were denied shelter. Regis closed the door behind him and approached the table. Tentative fingers drifted towards the hilt of their sword. Those were the orders, said the bearded men. Regis met his eyes and raised his hand. The bottles on the table trembled. Orders have changed, he croaked. This place doesn't belong to you. You will depart Vidort without delay. You will forget our meeting and forget that you were ever here. The bearded man's features loosened and his face lost all expression. Yes, my lord, he whispered. As the last of the soldiers left the cabin, Regis felt his eyes fog up. He tried to approach the bench, but his legs refused to obey, and he collapsed, banging his head against the chair. As the darkness enveloped him, he remembered the beginnings of their journey, a hospital in the wasteland, the quiet groans of the dying and the smells of death. They will die anyway, not by my hand. Detlaf stands beside him, his hand dripping red. You need blood, Regis. Ooh, good guy, Regis. <laughs>